It's midnight, the night before we're gonna load the trailer to drive straight through from Atlanta to Las Vegas to make it in time for SEMA. I think we got out west of Atlanta. We might've been in Alabama. It's nighttime and it starts raining. I went to hit the high beams on the headlights and the lights went out in the rain at night towing our SEMA vehicle, which at this point is invaluable. And my brother's riding shotgun with me, my brother Mike. And he goes, I think there's an exit up about two miles. You think you can make it? And I said, oh no, man, I can't see the road. Can you see the road? He goes, no, I can't see anything, but it's got that braille stuff over on the side. Just keep bouncing off of that. So for two miles in the night in the rain with no lights, we just get over to the side. And we, we got to the Bucky's. Yeah, I, I just cut the lights to the headlights and I cut the lights to the fog lights and I rewired the fog lights to the headlights and we had headlights for the rest of the way. That's why I'm not allowed to do anything here other than like write the checks and take the trash out. <laughs> My name is Matt White and I am the co-founder, president and CEO of Ampere EV. My background is, uh, is in engineering. I'm not a very good engineer. I don't think I ever really was, but I got some neat opportunities to work with some good people. And I got a well-rounded well experience in, uh, in business, doing some sales and operations and stuff like that. Learned uh, what to do and learned a lot of what not to do. I got into engineering because my dad was in the Air Force and he said as a baby, the only way to shut me up was to take me to the airfield. He went on to become a used car salesman. And he taught me how to work on cars and I fell in love with cars. I got really immersed in it with my brother Mike via the Grassroots Motorsports Challenge. I believe 2004, I think that was our first year with the first CRX we bought at a, uh, wasn't even a buy here, pay here lot, it was a pawn shop. I drove it with no clutch. So we had to get it started and get it on the road, rolling down the hill so I could shift it into first. And then my brother followed me in my Honda CRV, knowing that if I ever had to stop, he was gonna have to push with the CRV to get it rolling because it didn't have a clutch. And we drove it, I think it was like an hour and a half. It was south of Atlanta. We drove it up to his place up in Jasper, Georgia, where we, we proceeded to do the first Hong Nor Racing, which was the name of our outfit. The first CRX car we took to the challenge, which was called the A-Holes, was themed like the A-Team. But for us, the A-Holes seemed fitting. Several years later, we would actually go on to win the Grassroots Motorsports Challenge with a CRX, a different CRX, but, uh, but still yellow, with a D16 from an Integra and turbocharged. It's really awesome on the autocross. Well, you know, you start with a platform, you stick with it, right? I mean, the only platform we could afford was, was clapped out first gen CRX with the D15 slash EW4, 1.5 liter, low compression, blah, 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 blah. But we went on to build, we built a bunch of cars. We built some good stuff. I'm Matt, Matt White. This is the Boston Hong. One of our many, many Hongs. One of the cleanest Hongs and quite possibly the most powerful Hong. It's an 87 CRX with an Integra D16 A1. Yes, we know D16s are not really great motors, but if you put WRX Turbo on one and a Saab intercooler, it actually starts to make a little bit of power. And officially right now we are 225 horsepower. We had a turbo CRX that won in 2006. Uh, we just need to go lay down a 12.3 so we can get a shot at this event. Yeah. A yellow first gen turbo CRX. We had our forays with nitrous, which always ended the exact same way. We had a two stage kit on a, a third gen Civic. The year that Tim Sutter brought a dyno, a rolling dyno to the track in Gainesville for the challenge. And I proceeded to blow it up on the dyno. In fact, I think I might've blown it up before the dyno. I know because I was showing off in the parking lot, hitting the throttle and, and switching the nitrous on. So I might have blown it up before I even got on the dyno. But we had a lot of fun with that and I ended up collecting a bunch of CRXs and third gen Civics. And we had run some of those in uh, 24 Hours of Lemons as Hong Nor 
And then Hong Nor being based out of Tampa kind of spread to the North George area via Hong North. We ran somewhere between four and six races before we finished one. And I knew it was winnable because Hong North won one year. And I knew that Jay Lamb was a man of his word and he pays $1,500 to the winner in nickels. It might be three years ago now, I heard about uh, Jay wanting to offer a million nickels to anyone that could win one of those events with an electric vehicle. One of the guys I met was a guy named Blake Fabiani. Uh, this, this kid is wicked smart. He understood that we probably had a chance to at least be competitive. At a minimum, it would take $70,000 to potentially win $50,000. So I said, brilliant, that math works for me. Thankfully, he had, he had worked in the, in the field for quite a while. He had worked on a startup and they had an electric GT. I was at the track in my garage one day messing around with my CRX as I saw that GT go around the corner. I went running after it and followed him into the garage and that's how we met. And I don't think it was a day or two after that, we were in my garage talking about this 24 hours of lemons standing next to a CRX going, well, and then that migrated to, yeah, I got this, I got this old Nissan Leaf motor that we started using on this project. Yeah, that thing for 500 bucks. We'll, you know, we'll CAD some motor mounts. And by CAD, I mean cardboard and duct tape. Getting ready to uh, do some more work on our electric lemons car. Uh, I think this is an 86 CRX. We have many of them. Uh, this is the only one that wasn't really rusty. So uh, despite the fact that it's nice and pretty, we're gonna enter it in a lemons race. Just cause uh, we got hard points we can weld too. Power is going to come from a Nissan Leaf motor of questionable origin, but that's uh, eh, electric, should be fine, right? We've got three cooling systems, this left cooling system, uh, pump down there in the bottom with the blue hose coming out of it, reservoir, that's for the motor uh, and the inverter. We'll, we'll make some, some uh, mock-up motor mounts, we'll get the motor mount fitted. We'll come to an understanding of about what we think these batteries look like. The ones that we chose to go with were the LG Chem, 60 volts, 2.5 kilowatt hours, I think a piece. Uh, we'd put six to a module, we'd make three modules, and, and we're doing the math and we're figuring out, that, hey, this thing looks like it might work. And so we got serious, he started ordering parts. And just, it got out of control. It, you know, I had a buddy of mine that does some engineering work for me, machine out these cooling plates because we knew we had we knew we had to take some some heat out of the system because be whacking these batteries so we had a cooling network with uh, can controlled pumps and we had to have these battery boxes built that were basically exoskeletons that we could take in and out of the car we're calculating 40 minutes we're hoping for more we're not going to get an hour and we're going to get more than 20 minutes so uh, hopefully that helps out a little bit so that's that's what a battery pack looks like these channels are what it sits on. Those are more steel L channels. The white stuff is uh, Teflon for sliding the battery pack forward and back. It got to the point where it didn't look like it was going to be doable, but in the Hong Nor way, we continued to try and hammer the square peg into the round hole. Towards the end, I got frustrated. I said, man, why didn't somebody just make something that plugs together that you can just install and go have fun with? So that was the impetus behind the very beginnings of of how Ampere EV got started. That was me and Blake having that discussion and Blake going, I think I can make this happen. Blake and I added a third, uh, Lawson Sumner, a Georgia Tech grad, actually running the Georgia Tech rec racing team that competed in the Grassroots Motorsports Challenge. Rec racing and Hong Nor racing were fierce rivals. He was well respected in the, in the racing community. I mean, we, we respected those guys. Now there's three of us. So what next? Yeah, so I'm not paying Lawson much. I wasn't paying Blake at all, which was awesome. I wasn't paying myself at all, which wasn't very awesome, but yeah, I'll work other places, you know. My brother had recently sold his picture framing business, and I don't know if he was looking for a job, but I gave him one. Needed somebody on the cheap, but man, I, I needed a soldier who I could who I could rely on and who I could trust to get stuff done. I brought him in, moved from our garage at the track at Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville. And I had a friend who had a 10,000 square foot warehouse in uh, old downtown Dawsonville by the, by the square, if you know Dawsonville. It was way too much room for us when we moved in, but that's how it always starts. Anybody who's started a business can tell you the first place you walk into, you go, I will never fill this place up. And eventually you fill that place up and you go to the next place where you go, I will never fill that place up. Now we're starting to have some success. We're, we're building stuff and we're taking it to SEMA. Our first SEMA car was a DeLorean. We knew that people would look at a DeLorean, not even knowing what it was about, what was in it. So we built the DeLorean, took it to SEMA, and we started to get some street cred. 
we're starting to kit up to make more systems. We're putting stuff in that supply chain pipeline that was all messed up a couple of years ago. This is a year and a half ago. <laughs> Having nothing, no clear path to what it was we wanted to do or how we were gonna get there to, yeah, 12 months after bringing Lawson on, building a DeLorean for SEMA in 90 days, I think we did it in. And like I've always said, if I am the smartest guy in the room, we are screwed. I need really sharp people. I need focused people. I need hard workers. I need guys that are utility players. And, and that's what we do. We get the guys. And it's not only work ethic, it's attitude, right? It's ability to work with others. It's getting out, getting outside your lane sometimes, staying in your lane other times. And that's what's got us to where we are, is I've brought in guys like uh, Shay. Shay comes in because I hit the limit of my abilities. I had set up the QuickBooks system, I had set up purchasing, and knowing all along that I was gonna have to have somebody come in here and really, for lack of a better term, clean up what I had done and continue it on. He had supported uh, some cars that I raced and had done some work for us and had actually uh, lent us a mechanic to do a lot of the wiring for the DeLorean for SEMA, Kenny. And, and I, had I had talked to Shay uh, quite a bit before I got to the point where I really needed him. Got him on board. He and Jay kind of came as a package. They'd worked together before and worked very well together before. And I needed a Jay too. So I got Shay and Jay. We have not stopped steamrolling since then.